I, in this video series, I will show you how you can take real life JSON formatted data to create awesome graphics in Blender like these. If you want to harness the full power of EV or cycles, or maybe you want to put some real data into your virtual scene, you need to get that data into Blender somehow and be able to use it without having to model things manually. So the point here is that I want dynamic procedural charts where I can simply plug in new data and get a new chart. In this first video, I will show you how to take some render performance measurements from Blender Open Graph to create bar charts. And in the second video, we will take a completely different set of uh, data to create a different type of chart. So if you don't want to miss any of the upcoming videos, a sub would be awesome. Let's get started. All right, first things first, we need some data. Like I said, I'm going to use some data from open data. You can go to opendata.blender.org. And right here, you can download this benchmark if you want. You can test, speed test your own system. Um, as many have done before, uh, almost 100,000 benchmarks have been performed here and you can see what is the fastest CPU, what's the fastest GPU. I'm very happy with my system at the moment because I do have a Threadripper 3970X and a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti in my system, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to get some data. So you can click on this search data tab here and then you can filter the data, all the, the benchmarks that have been sent in to Blender Open Data to get some interesting stuff. So let's see, we can show all devices on any type, any operating system running any benchmark. So here are the different benchmarks, different scenes, the BMW, the uh, classroom scene, and some of the other very um, famous scenes like the barbershop. So I think I'm just gonna take all of the data and group it by the scene, apply filter, and that gives me this kind of data set with the seven different scenes. Here we have the median render time, so we can see which one is actually the slowest or the fastest. We also get the number of benchmarks, and now we can export this as a JSON file. So I'm just gonna hit download, and I'm gonna call it tutorial1.json in my download file. Awesome. Okay, so now we're in Blender here. I'm using a 2.90, which is still alpha at this moment. And I started it uh, in Linux here from the command line so that I get the command line output down below here. If you're in Windows, I believe you have to go to window and then show the terminal. And we're gonna need that terminal in animation nodes in a second. So I'm gonna delete everything, split the screen, go to animation nodes, create a new node tree. Over here, switch off always, switch on these options. Always the same here. And now, how do we get this JSON data that we have in the file now into animation nodes so we can use it and create some stuff with it? Well, we're gonna have to write three little lines of Python code. But before you um, stop the video and unsubscribe and send some horrible thoughts my way, um, this is super, super easy. Even if you have no idea what the hell programming or coding is, um, you can do it too, just follow along. It's just so that we get the, the data that's in the file. JSON is a text file. So we get that into Blender. So, okay, how do we do it? Well, inside of animation nodes, we can add a script node, okay? Oh, and also let me uh, switch on the screencast keys so you can see what I'm typing up here. Okay, so just hit Control A, look for script, and that gives you this script node, okay? Now, we can create a new script, which is now called my script. And we can split the view here and go to the text editor. And we have the my script in here now. So this is a, um, a text file, a script file where we can write our Python code. Okay, what's the Python code? 
Well, first of all, we're going to go with um, open e file name. And in my case, this was, I saved it in home, Chris, downloads, and I called it tutorial1.json, I believe. Okay, so with open this file as f, as a file, we can then um, do something with it. We need to parse the JSON data that's in it. So we need to go json.load from this file and put that into a new variable. Let's just call it j. And in order to use this JSON library that can parse this file, we have to import it. So import JSON, very, very easy. Now, right now we can, for example, go print j, save it, save Blender file, and now we can execute this. And down here, you can see the output on the console window. So we actually read in the data, JSON data, and we output it here. Cool, awesome, what does it look like? So um, the JSON data that we get from Blender Open Data looks like this. It's a JSON uh, format, so it starts with the curly braces, and then we have the different properties. First property is a header. We don't need that. And then there's a footer. There's nothing in there. And then there's a body. And the body here is an array of arrays. And this is the actual data that we exported. So we're interested in that this body um, part of the object. So this J here now, this variable is a special JSON object. And we can get the, the body out of that by simply creating a new variable, let's call it data. And we're gonna take J and the uh, body uh, part of that JSON object. Okay, so let's print data, exec save, execute. And here we have just the data left. And now this is an array of arrays. And we can actually use this inside of animation nodes. Okay, so our Python script. Uh, sets this variable called data and then prints out the data. We don't need this print. And then we can close this up a little. So we are already good to go. It's just a few lines of code. Here we have the script and we have to invoke this script. So w create invoke node. And this is now a sub program node that um, executes the script that we wrote and then gives us the data output. But first of all, we have to uh, tell the script in animation nodes the node that we want this data. And we know that it's a list, right? So it's a, an array of arrays, which is a list. And we can simply tell the node here that we need a generic list output and it's called data. So this is important that this matches the variable name in our script. And then the invoke node gets an output data and this now contains the list. Okay, now how do we, how, what, what do we do with it? So, uh, what do we want? Maybe we want to create a bar chart using the data here, the times or maybe the, the counts of um, benchmarks that have been handed in. Let's just do this median render time. So this column here, which we have here. Now we need to create, let's do bar charts. So let's start with a cube. Now let's start with a cylinder, okay? And I'm gonna go into edit mode and GC1 so that the origin of my object is at the bottom here because I'm going to create a loop in animation nodes and scale this cylinder on the C axis and scaling always takes in, into account the origin of the object. So it's gonna stick to the bottom basically and just scale the top up and down. That's what I want. Okay, so now I have one cylinder. I'm gonna have to create more cylinders. So I need an object instancer. How many objects, how many cylinders do I want? Uh, instances, I want this many instances. Oops, of course I have to take the invoke. I have to take this, okay. So this is the actual execution. This is just which script are we executing. So we get the length from our list and this many instances are now being uh, created with this node and they're all in the same spot here, but we can see that we get seven cylinders. So it's already working. We know that we have seven scenes from the benchmarks and we get seven cylinders. Awesome, now what do we do with those? 
we're gonna need a loop and place them maybe along the x-axis. So let's shift a subprogram loop, create a new loop. And into this loop, we're going to stick a list of objects, the cylinders. So we want an object list, new iterator input. And those are going to be our the bars of our bar chart. And then we can hit uh, whoopsie, W, create invoke node, and we can plug our cylinders into our list. Now inside of the list, we're gonna place them along the X, like I said. So we have one object, we have to place it. We need a transform output node for the location. We're going to place one cylinder to a new X location. So we have to create a vector combine, plug that in there. And then we just take the index and plug it on the X. So this is what it looks like, cool. But we want to spread it out a little. So we need a number math node maybe multiply this by some factor. So now we have seven cylinders for our bar chart. And all we have to do now is scale the cylinder using the data from the JSON file. Okay, so we also need to uh, scale the cylinder on the C axis. We need to create another vector that we can plug in here. And here we're going to use the C value and where do we get the c value well we need to get it from our data so our loop here also needs the data from the json file um, so i'm just going to go to the loop input and add another iterator from a generic list this is our data i'm just uh, naming it here so that we know what it is and we can plug the data into this data now we have uh, each, where is it? Like each list is now coming out of this socket here. So each, like each row of the exported list. So what do we do? We have to get an element from a list, right? So each, each entry here itself again is a list because it's a list of lists. And we need to get something from this list here. Okay, so get list element. I'm going to go over here to the advanced and I'm gonna change the type of this node to be generic. So I can plug my generic list in here. Like the data types uh, that we get from Python with the Python script that we wrote um, don't necessarily match the data types that are available in animation nodes. By the way, if you're interested in animation nodes data types, I have a video on that in my animation notes introduction tutorial series here on my channel. All right, so we're gonna get an element. Let's look here. So the first element with index zero would be the, the label BMW or classroom. The second one is the one that we want. So index one is going to give us that value here. Now, what can we do with it? It is a sort of a generic thing. We don't know exactly what it is. So let's look for a convert node. We know that we have a convert node in animation nodes. We can plug anything in here and we can say what we want. We want a float. So it's gonna convert whatever that is into a float. It already looks like a float here. And we plug that into the C value and now this is quite big, but when I scroll up here, we can see that we have different heights. Okay, so it's just huge because these numbers are huge, right? So what's the, the biggest one here? A thousand. So this is now a thousand units high, a thousand meters high. Poo. Okay, what do we want to do here? We want another math node. So shift a number math node and divide it by Let's just do 1000. That should bring the height down quite a bit. And here we go. Oh, and my first cylinder here, I can actually hide. I don't need to see my original cylinder. I just wanna see the ones that I create with animation nodes. So already we have bar charts from JSON data. Cool. Now we have a factor here that we can set to, maybe we just want to divide it by 500. 
So we get a little bit more interesting looking thing here. You know what? We can also do something here. We can click the loop input and create a new generator. And we're taking in an object list, the cylinders, and we want our loop to also output the same list of objects. Just so that over here we can continue in our um, node tree, can chain up more things here. And what I want to do here is a search for smooth object. I'm going to smooth all these objects out so that they look nice. Of course, now you can go and create a material for this and make it look very nice and add some lights and a camera and animate it. But that's not really part of this tutorial. This is just how do you get JSON data that you get from a website or maybe you have your own data that you need to visualize into animation nodes so you can use it. And this is how you do it. A little tiny script that opens uh, the JSON data file from your hard disk and then parses that because it is JSON and then just gives that data to animation nodes so you can use it here. Okay, so now how about the labels? Let's add some labels. So as usual, we need in an object that we can then uh, instance, duplicate inside of animation nodes. So I'm gonna shift a uh, text, where is it? Here. And right away I can hide it. I know I have this text object. I'm gonna create my own text object in animation nodes. So just like I created uh, seven cylinders here, I'm going to create another object instancer instances here. I'm not going to do the cylinder. I want the text. So now I have seven text objects in here. Okay. In this animation nodes container. Now I want to place those as well. So why not just stick them into the same loop that I already have. So let's create a new iterator. I know that the length is the same seven bars, seven texts. So we have another object list. Let's call it text or labels, whatever. And then we plug those into our invoke sub program node. And in our sub program now, we also have the labels that we can also place just like the cylinders here. So we need another object transform output. In this case, we are transforming a single label. And where are we putting it? Well, we're basically putting it in the same location like the, uh, the bar, but I'm going to add another vector. Where is it? Vector math node in here. Okay. So that I can shift the texts over so I can maybe move them on the Y axis. Okay. And then also I'm going to enable a rotation up here and rotate on the C. Whoops, this is scale. Rotate on the C like this. Now I could put the texts in the back here or just go into my original text here and align that one right and center. No right, right and center. Okay. For all of these settings to work, we have to uh, enable deep copy here. Again, I have a tutorial series about animation nodes. So they should be aligned right now, but they all say text. This is no good. We need to get the text. Okay. In our data here, we have the label of the scene that is being uh, benchmarked. So let's take that, right? Get list element, copy this guy from our data that we get from JSON. We take index zero, so the first entry, and we convert this to a text in this case. So take the first uh, text. So it's going to say barbershop, BMW, classroom. Okay. And we need to assign this text to the actual text object. How do we do that? Shift a text. Um, where is that? Oh, object output. It's down, down here. So the last entry. Object output. 
Which object? Well, the text, so I'm just going to drop that in here. I can enable the text and assign this text to it. And look at that. We have the render times visualized in a cool bar chart with the labels and the correct heights. Awesome. Now there's just one thing left to do. Let me switch over to look dev mode. Everything is white. Okay, now let's take the same value that we have, the render time, and create a color that we can use in a material so that we can have different colors for the different heights, basically. How do we do that? Well, okay, we know we have the value here, right? This is the value that gives us the height now. Let's use this value somehow. So how do we uh, create a color? We want shift a color combine. We can take an RGB. We could use the red channel or whatever and plug in our value. So this is quite a large number, but of course we can do the same thing that we did up here. Uh, add a math node, divide the number, and let's just enter 1060 in here so that we know we have a value between zero and one. We plug that into this color. Now, how do we assign this color so that we can use it in a material node? Well, there is a, a node here in color that is set vertex color. We can do that. But of course we need a vertex color slot first. So we go to the cylinder, to the vertex colors and just create one. So now the cylinder has a vertex color slot Sometimes when you do changes that are like outside of animation nodes, you have to go in here and simply uh, uncheck deep copy and check it again. So that animation nodes, uh, knows that all the seven copies that we have of this cylinder now also have a single color uh, vertex color slot, right? So now we can assign this color to the vertex color slot of an object, which object will Let's take, oh, let's take this one, right? So at the end, uh, no, this is the text. Whoopsie, we have to take this one, okay? So the cylinder is going to get a color. And the color is gonna have a value between zero or one and an R, a red channel between zero and one, uh, according to the value that we get from the JSON. So what do we do with this? Let's go over to shading, look at that. We are going to take the cylinder, give it a new color. Now all these cylinders that we instanced in animation nodes also have this color. And we can take an input vertex color. We know that uh, there is one color slot, the first one, and we use that and plug it in here. And nothing happens. Let's go back here, maybe execute the node tree. Is this all set up correctly here? Divide color should be working. Why isn't it shading? How about we take a converter separate RGB and take the red channel and put that into a color ramp between black and white. Okay, something is not working here. Cylinder, deep copy, execute node tree. Now it's working, so we have uh, this. And how about uh, Large values are slow, so we want to make them red. So let's make this guy red, the large ones, and then make let's make the smaller ones green, right? Those are the good ones. And then of course we can, for example, bring this down a little so that we have, those are good, they're green, this one is not so good anymore. And here we can see that the barbershop interior is definitely very slow to render. The Victor scene is also very slow. BMW is definitely the fastest. All right, so we're using very simple JSON data from Blender Open Data. We're parsing that data using Python 
and then we're um, providing that data to animation nodes and then we're doing stuff in animation nodes like creating the correct amount of bars. So if we plug in a different set of data now, which this still works, we just get maybe 25 bars. And we also take the label, create seven labels in this case, assign the text to it. And now the coolest part about all of this, why are we doing this? Why are we parsing JSON data? Well, because we want to be able to use all of this that we have set up now and simply plug in new data. <laughs> let's try that. Okay, so let's go back to um, Blender open data. Let's do like, I don't know. Let's group by device name, apply the filter and we get oy, 101 pages. That's quite a lot. Maybe we should take it down a little. Maybe we just want Linux and I don't know, the classroom scene. What do we get now? 42 pages, still a lot, but who cares? Let's download this tutorial 1b.json, save the file. And all we have to do now is go in here. Instead of tutorial 1.json, we just load tutorial 1b.json. Save. It's saved. And now we're going to execute the node tree. And check this out. Holy moly, this is a lot of data. But that's all we had to do. I didn't have to change anything. <laughs> I just load a different set of data. And my awesome node tree in animation nodes creates a whole bunch of bars and the labels to go with them, right? Now, of course, the colors uh, need to be adjusted because obviously here we have very high values. And down here, I'm just dividing by 1060. So you would have to adjust that. Or maybe this is your homework for this tutorial, how about you create another loop, run through all the values, determine what is the maximum, and then use that maximum inside of this loop that we have here to normalize the values to be between zero and one, which is perfect for plugging into the color um, so that we always get nice colors between green and red in this case. All right, this is it for the first tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. The finished blend file of this tutorial, including the second loop to normalize the values, is available at patreon.com slash crisp. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video. In the next video, by the way, we will create this kind of chart. Thanks for watching. Crispy out.